Hey, it's Tucker Carlson. This morning, it looks like somebody blew up the Kokovka Dam in southern Ukraine. Welcome back to our channel. This is your host, and today we have some exciting news to share with you. The renowned commentator and television host, Tucker Carlson, has just dropped his first episode on Twitter, and trust me, it's a doozy. We're diving deep into the world of social media and political commentary, so buckle up and get ready for an intriguing discussion. Let's jump right in. Tucker Carlson, a prominent figure in the world of media and politics, has decided to expand his reach beyond traditional television platforms. With millions of followers on Twitter, he recognized the immense potential for engaging with his audience directly through this social media giant. The launch of his Twitter show has caused quite a stir, and people are eager to see how it will unfold. You can't have a free society if people aren't allowed to say what they think is true. Speech is the fundamental prerequisite for democracy. That's why it's enshrined in the first of our constitutional amendments. Amazingly, as of tonight, there aren't many platforms left that allow free speech. The last big one remaining in the world, the only one, is Twitter, where we are now. By taking his commentary to Twitter, Carlson aims to connect with a broader demographic and tap into the power of social media to influence the public discourse. With the ability to share videos, articles, and engage in real-time conversations, Twitter provides him with a new avenue to express his views and connect with his supporters. Now, let's get into the details of Carlson's first episode on Twitter. In this episode, he delves into a wide range of pressing issues, from the state of the economy to the role of big tech in shaping public opinion. His unique perspective and thought-provoking arguments make for an engaging watch. As of today, we've come to Twitter, which we hope will be the shortwave radio under the blankets. We're told there are no gatekeepers here. If that turns out to be false, we'll leave. But in the meantime, we are grateful to be here. Carlson wastes no time in addressing the controversies surrounding social media platforms, such as Twitter itself. He explores the implications of censorship, the spread of misinformation, and the growing influence of tech giants on our daily lives. His incisive commentary challenges viewers to think critically about these important topics. Since its release, Tucker Carlson's first episode on Twitter has garnered significant attention and sparked intense debate across the social media landscape. Supporters laud his fearless approach, applauding him for tackling controversial subjects and pushing boundaries. However, critics argue that this move could further polarize online discussions and exacerbate echo chambers. The impact of this new venture by Tucker Carlson remains to be seen. As he continues to produce episodes on Twitter, it will be interesting to observe how this platform shapes his interactions with viewers and influences the broader media landscape. It's a bold move that could redefine the relationship between influential figures and their audience. As George W. Bush once noted, he is our generation's Winston Churchill. Of all the people in the world, our shifty, dead-eyed Ukrainian friend in the tracksuit is uniquely incapable of blowing up a dam. He's literally a living saint, a man in whom there is no sin. That's why Lindsey Graham is so attracted to him. They're just two good people, hanging out together and being good. And like all good people, when they meet in person, they spend a lot of time talking about killing people and laughing like friends do. Here's the pair last week. Free or die. Free or die. Now you are free. Yes. And we will be. And the Russians are dying. It's the best money we've ever spent. Thank you so much. No, it's... The Russians are dying. It's the best money we've ever spent, Graham says. See, That's there's nothing dark here. Just two middle-aged guys celebrating the killing of a population. They don't seem like the kind of people who'd enjoy flooding villages or starting a famine. And in any case, who cares if they are? It's really not your business. Your job is to support Ukraine. Watch Nikki Haley, a Republican candidate for president, explain this principle on CNN. A win for Ukraine is a win for all of us. And for them to sit there and say that this is a territorial dispute, that's just not the case. To say that we should stay neutral, it is in the best interest of America. It's in the best interest of our national security for Ukraine to win. We have to see this through. We have to finish it. See? It's at this point, we can't possibly know what our leaders are doing. We're not allowed to know. By definition, that is not a democracy. Yet it's fine with the media. Secrecy is a powerful tool of control. Stop asking how we got so rich. Here's another story about racism. Go eat each other. That's the program. That's how most of us now live here in the United States. Manipulated by lies, silenced by taboos. It is unhealthy and it's dehumanizing, and we're tired of it. 
As of today, we've come to Twitter, which we hope will be the shortwave radio under the blankets. We're told there are no gatekeepers here. If that turns out to be false, we'll leave. But in the meantime, we are grateful to be here. We'll be back with much more very soon. And that's a wrap for today's discussion on Tucker Carlson's first episode on Twitter. We've witnessed an exciting shift in the world of political commentary as Carlson steps onto a new platform to engage with his audience. Whether you agree or disagree with his views, one thing is for sure, the launch of his Twitter show is set to have a significant impact on the digital sphere. Thank you all for joining me today, and don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and share your thoughts in the comments section below. Until next time, take care, and keep those conversations going.